All right, so to get us started here, the uh, first thing I've got to do is set up my DAW. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and open up my DAW. And for me, I use Studio One. If you've watched any of my videos, I've done a couple things on Ableton and Tracks Live, but for the most part, I use Persona Studio One. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to create a new song. And now in this scenario, I've already got a, uh, a, a template that's designed. And let's see here, most of these are going to be 48 kilohertz. So I've got a template set up that's going to offer me all of the inputs, um, but I need to come up for me to song setup. And this gives me the opportunity to set up all of my inputs and my outputs. Uh, so in this case here, I would want to, I need to come in and select the XUSB. And then when I hit OK, that's going to be set up for the XUSB card. And then I can come back into Song Setup. And now you'll see that all of my inputs, 1 to 32, are mapped, uh, mapped in this little matrix here. But what I need to do as well is map my outputs. So this, I actually need to save this as, save this so that these are pre-mapped every time I open this template up. Uh, I need to remap these, but I'll do this and then I'll be right back. So once I have all these mapped, I can hit apply. They turn dark colored and now my inputs and my outputs are mapped and set up and ready for me to, uh, to be sending and receiving information from the console and back into the board. Now for me also, I'm gonna come up and save this as a template. And what I can do is replace existing template um, because that's what I wanna do. And I'll hit okay, there we go. So now this is set as a template. Now I do have my board connected and so you can see some random stuff happen in channel 27, 28. It's not a big concern at this point. We're gonna go ahead and actually turn off the record feature which is enabled. So you can see here I have record enabled just by default so that if I get to a gig and I just need to quickly plug this thing in and hit record, I'm ready to go. For me, by selecting all my inputs and hitting this uh, record button, they are now all de-enabled or unenabled or not enabled. So we're not gonna get any input signal coming from the console in a recording fashion. All right, so my DAW is set up. Now what I need to do is go in and find my tracks. So for me, I've got a number of tracks here that were sent. Now you can see right here, Addy, Addy with a two, Addy with a three. What that tells me is that when they made the recording, they stopped a couple times within the project. And so I only need to select the ones with no numbers. So Addy there, bass there, then Becky, Bill. And what I'm gonna do is drag these in to my actual DAW here, but I wanna look at their scene and get them in the right spot so that I've got, if, if Addie is uh, channel one, then she needs to be in one. If Addie is actually channel seven, then I need to come down and put her in seven. So I'm gonna pull all these in. I'm gonna get my scene set up. Uh, you can, usually you can multi-select and you can drag and drop these in and eventually what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of shrink this thing down and you'll be able to see some waveforms here. You see some waveforms and we wanna make sure that they are all pushed all the way to the left, the furthest to the left they can go so that they all start at the same time. So I'm gonna get all these set up and locked in and then we will come right back. All right, so once I've got all the tracks in here, you will see that what I've done is I've gone ahead and labeled these tracks. Now that just made it easier for me because they were, they came with a name, and so I was able to put the name in the same order, numerical order, as what their soundboard is set up as. This just makes it easier uh, in order to keep everything in order, to keep everything neat and tidy, and to make it easier to troubleshoot if I needed to troubleshoot. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just confirm by coming down here, and for me, I'm going to click this button, and then this button here, and this shows me that in fact I have input 19, and I have output 19 or sub out 19. These sub outs match to my, uh, the outputs that we mapped earlier in the DAW. That allows these individual signals, they're taking a pre-fader level, which I've set to zero. So I click on here, if I click on the sub out, 
Oop, it just, see, it just changed, but I can come up here to the top for me. I can set that to zero, and you'll see that it's the same level as all the other ones. So just like in the console pre-fader, what that means is that if I happen to turn this fader down uh, for some reason, the signal that goes back out into the X32, which is what I'm actually going to be listening to, is not going to be impacted by this fader change. Um, just because I'm picky, I'm going to set this back up to zero. And then we'll move on. So I just wanted to confirm that all of my inputs are in fact mapped one to one with the outputs and then I'm ready to move on. All right, so the next thing I usually like to do is just hit the play button and make sure that I have tracks moving and I do have tracks moving here. And if I wanted to pull up a mix over here in the main outs and just shove some headphones into my computer. I could do that just to confirm that everything is working in the DAW. Now I don't need uh, I don't need the the main out. All I need are the actual tracks. And you can see we have a limited number of tracks. I've got empty tracks here to the right, and we'll see that um, we'll see that reflected in the actual console itself. So I'm going to stop this. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up X32 Edit. Now, you don't need to use X32 Edit, but what we're going to do is get the scene that has been sent to me onto the soundboard. Now, if you've got if you've already got your own soundboard scene and you're just working with the multi-tracks, um, then you can bypass the step. But what I'm going to do is pull up X32 Edit. So I have X32 Edit here. Uh, this is whatever scene... This is a very different scene. So I've got the scene loaded on my computer here uh, that, that I need to get. So I'm going to go to load scene. I will go hunting for the scene. Excuse me while I do that. Here we go. I'm going to open it. And now what it's doing is it is resetting everything in X32 edit and everything on the console. So now X32 edit and the console um, are, are the exact same. So all the faders just shifted uh, next to me on the console. So now we have uh, a matchup here. You can see these names, Vicky, John, Gary, Justin. And if I come back into the DAW, Vicky, John, Gary, Justin. So we have all of the, uh, all of the tracks here and those tracks match up with what we have in the console itself. So now I need to switch the inputs on the console to be able to receive signal from the DAW. All right, so at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to routing. I'm gonna click on routing. And if you're on the console, this, this is probably gonna look a little different than the console, but you can do this the exact same way on the console. So what it looks like right now is they have some user in stuff set up for one through eight, and then they have a stage box that they're running AES 50. Now, I'm not gonna change these inputs because we have this option to go from record to play. We're gonna do play. What this means is record is usually used if you wanna record into a DAW. That's your normal show setting. If you wanna play back from the DAW, then I'm gonna click play. And now what I'm looking at is we've got some cards set up for one through eight, and then all of the other inputs are local. I don't want that because I want them all to come from the card. So I'm just gonna click back here and now all of my inputs are coming from the card. So I am now set up to receive signal from my DAW into the console. So if I close this window out and I come back here, if I hit the play button on the DAW, it's going to automatically start playing. And so now in X32 Edit and on the console next to me, I can see the meters flashing. That means that the audio from the DAW is coming back into the console just in the same order. So Vicky channel here one is the exact same uh, track that was recorded of that microphone into the DAW on the customer side. They sent me the tracks, they sent me the scene. Now I've got the exact same setup here. What this allows me to do is not just check that these are going uh, functioning properly, uh, but what I did set up here is a, a little different scene. So this is channels one through 16 plus DCAs. This is 17 to 32. Here's these blank channels that we were talking about. And so I'm gonna walk through this in the next video of me 
kind of going through, listening to the scene, listening to the tracks, listening to what they have made right now, specifically for their live stream. They like how their house sounds. So I'm not going to be messing with their house sound. I'm going to come down here to the stream and I'll be altering their stream sound. Now I may deal with EQ and compression along the way uh, and some of the effects, but for the most part, I'm just going to be listening to the stream and changing the stream. What I did here is I set up a different view that has just the inputs that we have tracks for. This just makes it easier for you guys as, as viewers to be able to see everything all in one spot. We don't have to flip layers, go back and forth. Uh, these are the exact things that we're gonna deal with in the stream. So we've got one effect, a vintage reverb. We have some drums, some bass, uh, some toms, some keyboards, a guitar, and then a, a, a number of vocals. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. If it has, feel free to hit the like button and the subscribe button. I do have one last thing I want to show, and that is with connecting X32 Edit into the console. So with this, if I come up here and I hit Setup, uh, we can see in X32 Edit that I have uh, an IP address here. Now for me right now, I actually just have a cat5 cable or an internet cable connected into my computer and into the remote control section on the back of the console and that allows me to not have to connect to a network with the console um, i can just connect directly to the console and then it will find it on uh, on x32 edit which is a really nice thing to do i will say this if you look up here in the top right you'll note that my wi-fi is turned off with this specific computer, it may be multiple computers, but this is an older MacBook Pro. And if I have Wi-Fi turned on, then this feature does not work properly because looking for Wi-Fi instead of a local area connection. So in here, um, I just plug it in and I can hit the rescan button and then it will find uh, the, the, the console with the IP address. And then I can hit connect up in the top right here. So when I hit connect, this screen actually pops up and says, do you want to go mixer to PC or PC to mixer? And so PC being the computer that you're working on, the personal computer. So I'm going to hit mixer to PC, and then it will transfer everything from the console into X32 edit. And now again, you can see that everything is functioning properly. It also gives a little computer name down here, which uh, could be helpful if you ended up doing a different type of setup and had to hard code some things. But this is the easy way to do it. Um, if you're just doing a, a computer right next to the console, like I am here, uh, but obviously a lot of people are networked in, in their space, in their venues uh, to a wireless router of sorts. And then you can connect wirelessly from a laptop or a tablet or a phone, depending on what you're trying to do. Hey, so I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and maybe the subscribe button as well. If you've got questions, leave them down in the comment section below. We're always answering questions and here to help you out with your mixing needs. If you want to uh, set up a individual one-on-one -on -one session, you can do that by using the link in the description as well, which will take you to my website. You can fill out the contact card there and we'll get in touch outside of YouTube. But that's it for this one. Thanks so much. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace.